Good morning, beautiful people. It is such a beautiful day out. <coughs> However, <coughs> I have allergies and my nose is stuffy and it sucks. I can't enjoy it. Let's go back inside. All right, much better. I hope the pollen doesn't leak in and try to attack me once more. So today guys, I'll be talking to you about why the Subaru WRX is financially the best bang for your buck and why it's the best option out there when you're looking to buying a brand new sports car or buying your next sports car. So let's get right to it. I have a list here of all of the, the 10 vehicles within the 25 to 30K price range and I'll be using it as a comparison to the WRX. Now again guys, this video is a little bit biased because I do not know much about the other vehicles. I know a lot about the WRX and I'm not a fanboy. I don't think Subaru is the best brand out there but it surely isn't the worst brand out there. So starting off the list, you have the GT86 FRS. Uh, BRZ platform. You have the Volkswagen GTI, you have the Fiat 500 uh, Abar Arbarth, I don't know how, how to pronounce that, you have the Ford Focus ST, you have the Mazda MX-5, you have the Mini Cooper Type S, you have the Ford Mustang, you have the Hyundai Genesis Coupe, and you have the uh, Chevy uh, Camaro. So the reason why the Subaru WRX is the best bank for your buck is because of its slowest uh, depreciation rate versus all these other vehicles out there. Now, like I said guys, the Subaru WRX isn't for everyone. I, I encourage you to test drive this car and test drive all of the other competing brands and see for yourself. So for me, the reason why I think this is the best bang for your buck is let's say this car isn't for you. Let's say you come in and you drive it and you know in the beginning it's great and then over time you're like, this car isn't for me, I want something even better. The rate of depreciation for Subaru WRXs is way slower versus all the other competitors and it's nice knowing that if you were to resell your car, you have a big culture backing it up and community backing up and it'll be a lot easier for you to sell that vehicle. And also with the slow rate of depreciation, you could always trade that car in and get most of your money back. Now that is something really unheard of when it comes to sports cars and cars in general. Like the general consensus is when you buy a car, it is a depreciating asset and you know you lose money the moment you drive it off a lot. However, with the WRXs, it's a little more sturdy and the depreciation is a lot less. So that is why I really think that this is the best bang for your buck. And you know, make sure to read the brochures, make sure to test drive the car because the brochure and pamphlet speaks volume about this car but the other aspect of it is actually getting behind the wheel and test driving for yourself and making a verdict then to see if this car really is meant for you so that's why i love this car that's why i always encourage people to check this car out first and like i said really if you don't like this car in the end you could always sell it and get most of your money back and then you could transition it to a different vehicle that you feel will fit your needs however in the case that you do want to keep this car it's also nice knowing that this car has a really stable and sturdy uh, value to it and you know that at any time if you ever want to sell it you'll be able to get most of your money back since we're on the discussion topic of selling reselling and value of the car, I wanna to touch a little bit about modding. And I've had a handful of people think that I am anti-modding. I'm not, like I said before in one of my videos, it's about modding your vehicle smart. When you come into this vehicle, it is very, very likely that you're going to mod this vehicle in one way or another. Now here in Sacramento, you cannot go anywhere without seeing a WRX that is riced out. So you'll see it lowered, you'll see you know brand new shiny rims, you'll see a shiny spoiler, you'll see uh, carbon fiber or vinyl black pieces all over the place, you'll see like tow hook, and you'll, just, you'll see like altered headlights, different colors and stuff like that. So you, like it's very, very rare to see a stock WRX, especially here in Sacramento. And to be honest, I'm probably one of the few guys with a WRX that is completely stock for the most part. And I want you guys to mod your vehicle correctly. Don't, you know, just buy bits and pieces and put it on there. For me, when it comes time for me to mod my car, if I ever do pursue that route, what I want to do is meet with a specialist and say, hey, this is what I'm looking for in this particular vehicle and what should my budget be like, what should I accommodate, what should I put away in case things may go kapooey. So 
I want you guys to take that into consideration. Don't just go onto the forums and buy this and that piece and then just hope that your car will gain a few extra horsepower. Don't do that. And when you're reselling your car, mods do not make your car more valuable. I cannot stress this enough that I see it again and again and again on the forums, especially the younger kids. They would drop like eight to 10 grand on their car, buy all of these like J-pipes, um, ETS uh, exhaust, uh, cob access port, buy like, all of this and that and th throw it onto the car and they're like, hey, I'm making like 300 something horsepower and I'm selling it for like normal amount and people are looking at you like you're crazy because I rather just go to the dealership and buy a brand new vehicle at stock for this price and know that it wasn't mod or anything like that versus your outrageous price that you're trying to sell a car for. So mods do not up the value of your vehicle. People want to buy the car closer to stock. So I stress you not, don't sell your car with all your mods onto it unless the buyer specifically asks for it. Take it all off, keep all of your stock parts, put it all back and tune it back to stock. That's really how you're going to get your money back. And then the remaining parts that you have, sell it on the used market. That's the best approach to selling your vehicle. And I find it really, really funny that people get really upset when you know, normal folks like me who are in the market, who want to buy a used WRX for a lower price, come on and say, hey, look, I don't want all of this stuff added onto the car. I like your car and I want to buy this at this uh, market value price, the actual true price. And then, you know, the seller gets all upset because he's like, well, I did this and this and this to my car. I don't want to sell for this much. And, you know, really, there's no way out of it. Like, you kind of mucked up the formula. You kind of... Uh, change the algorithms and everything you made this car uh, perform in a different way that it was intended to be and if it, if it your need or it may have you know gone south and now you're trying to get rid of the problem and stuff like that so we as a potential buyer don't want to see all of that we don't want to know that um, you know you did all this to the car we want to buy it as close to stock as possible so again in the used market uh, game it's a gamble and it's ultimately up to you and how you gauge the problem and how you're able to get a good deal out of it. Another thing about modding your WRX is this, guys. A WRX is a WRX and an STI is an STI. It ultimately depends on how you approach this car, which is how it'll make you happy. I see a lot of kids come into uh, the ownership of a WRX and they're like, okay, I bought a Subaru WRX, but I really wanted an STI instead, and so this is a compromise. In the end guys, this car is still a WRX. It'll never be an STI. So I want you guys to be aware of that, that as much money as you dump into a WRX, a WRX will still stay a WRX. And so again, I'm still holding off on the discussion topic of the STI Envy. I wanna go more in depth with that in the next video or so. Don't t throw on 10 to $15,000 or more into your WRX and expect it to perform exactly like an STI. It is not. A WRX and a STI, is two completely different vehicles and they both serve different purposes. So when you come on board and you buy yourself a WRX and you're like, well, in the end, I want an STI, be more patient and wait a little bit so that you can actually get the STI versus getting a WRX, which is more affordable and trying to STI it up. When I had my 2012 Subaru Impreza hatchback 2.0Y, I loved that car. The only gripe I had about it was how slow it was because it had the FB20 motor and it was a PZEV model car. And I kept wishing and wishing that the car was faster. That car had amazing handling capabilities and that car was very, very practical and it was a lot smaller and more compact. And overall, I really loved the ownership experience of my Impreza. However, it was missing horsepower and after three years of owning it, I got tired and fed up of how slow the vehicle was. And so I sold it to a really good family. Now, as much as I wanted my car to be faster, I looked into a potential engine swap because it had the FB20 platform. I was like, hey, maybe the FA20 platform is an easy swap. I could get it carb legal, that I could get, you know, uh, the smog uh, referee to, to pass everything. And then the more I looked into it, the more I realized how daunting and how expensive it's going to be just for me to get this <laughs> engine swap going and how complicated the new vehicles are and in the end I was just just so frustrated like okay in order for me to get my Subaru Impreza hatchback 2.0i to be an actual WRX 
it's going to cost me fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and there's also the possibility that my car will not pass smog and I will not be able to have it become road legal especially here in California and so I was frustrated and I finally accepted the fact that my Impreza is just an Impreza it'll never be a WRX and it'll never be an STI so I instead sold the car off and I saved and waited a little bit and of course I got my WRX now and that's what I've been wanting from the get-go and now I have it and I am completely happy with it regardless of its performance it, you know at stock this car is amazing I don't have to worry about anything and it's all under warranty right now so I'm very happy I'm a happy camper so I want you guys to think about it if you guys are coming into uh, buying a WRX or any of the other vehicles like the Honda Civic SI or uh, the, lo the lower trim model cars and you're expecting it to perform like a Type R, you're never going to. It'll always be that vehicle regardless of how much money you put into it and unless you have lots of money to spend. So think about it guys. Think about your financial you know, options. Think about what you really want as a consumer and really gauge into the market and play with the market quite a bit. Test drive as many times as you want and as many times as you can before you make the final verdict on making your next sports car purchase. So if you guys want to know more about why the WRX is you know, your best bank for your buck, um, watch my other videos. I talk about and I praise about this car quite a lot so I'm going to try my best not to keep praising this car. But again guys, the best thing about this car is the slow depreciation rate and the fact that if you ever want to change your mind and want to sell this car back you'll get most of your money back and you'll be able to use that and leverage it towards your new vehicle purchase so i hope you guys like this video if you do give it a thumbs up a like share subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video and of course guys don't forget to subscribe